Greetings all. Welcome to another session of Tuesday Talks. Today we're going to be looking at this article uh, entitled uh, Blending Technologies in ESL Courses and Inquiry, uh, Reflexive Inquiry. The authors are Gruba, uh, Clark, Eng, and Wells. Uh, comes from a uh, convention or a conference that was being held in uh, Australia in about 2009. You can go out and find this article, and I do recommend that you go look at it and read up a little bit about uh, the research that they did, and hopefully do some of your own research. Let's jump over to the article. Again, this was uh, an article that was published in 2009 at a preceding or at a conference. Um, and uh, so I just want to walk through the article, uh, look at some of the things that I found interesting and uh, some of the changes that may have occurred as a result of some of their work and as a result of the evolving and emerging technologies. So uh, they begin by talking about how they're going to be using ESL in their foreign, and they're going to be using uh, technologies in their foreign language uh, classes, in their ESL classes in particular. They're going to be focusing on uh, podcasts and using podcasts. Now, uh, years ago, or actually even today, some people might view a podcast as simply an audio element, and this is what they were referring to when they were looking at this stuff. Uh, they considered uh, podcasts as primarily for listening activities, whereas I probably take a larger view of video podcast or uh, a podcast that uses video. And theirs is primarily for audio, and they're creating these audio podcasts in their study. They took a longitudinal study, so it's a longitudinal reflective study. They're going to be doing this over a couple of semesters um, and seeing how uh, the use of podcasts are beneficial or not beneficial. Uh, the, the podcasts that they made, uh, they put them in a variety of settings. For example, uh, interviews, lectures, and short updates. And then they had these and they were given to their students to be used primarily to teach listening. Uh, they wanted to try to expand this within this recent study. So some of the things that they talked about as far as well-designed listening materials, that they should be input salient. Okay, In other words, it's going to be some type of uh, uh, second acquisitional types of uh, components. Uh, it's going to have some concepts, both visual and verbal, and it's going to be some type of authentic language, real materials. Okay. Additionally, uh, they talked about... Um, Instruction in foreign language listening should consist of motivating the learner's interests. All of this is research-based uh, theory, I theoretical ideas, and I would agree with all of this. Uh, keep the students motivated, uh, engaging them with their appropriate level, and encouraging them to uh, get strategies so that they can learn for themselves. Okay, another thing that they suggested in here, uh, that in second language curriculum, pro uh, the podcast can help provide exposure to spoken language with a multitude of characteristics. Um, I love this idea. I remember living overseas, um, and I was only in a given area, a small area, had a small group of friends, and I began to learn language, and I learned their voices. And uh, someone's learning a second language or a foreign language in particular, they're only getting this tapes or the CDs or the limited audio input that they're going to have with the, within the classroom. Doing things with uh, podcasts gives you a whole new list and group of people where uh, they can listen. So it's a great thing for podcasts. The range of resources, including both pre-built and authentic materials. Again, tons of materials that are now available because of podcasts. Definite plus. Exposure to the culture in areas where the target language uh, is spoken. Another plus for using podcasts. Finally, an engaging set of materials that can be tailored at an adequate length. Biggest problem with most authentic materials is that it's too long. Uh, you've seen articles and researcher, researches on using movies or TV shows, and they're long. Better ones would be using things like movie trailers or commercials because they're, uh, they're shorter and better to the length. Podcasts, even more so, can be tailored to the needs of the students. So this was some good ideas that they had put in here with regard to creating podcasts for their students. So they developed an action research in order to do that. And uh, I'm going to run down here to some of the things that they did and some of the issues that they had after they instituted their uh, research. Okay. Um, one of the things that they talk about with regard to the development of uh, the video um, of the podcast is some of the problems that they had. McCoy uh, in this article lists five hindrances, one being insufficient time. If I could say that's the largest problem with making uh, materials is you don't have time to do it. Um, uh, teachers from all over the globe that I have interacted with, they don't have time to get these things made. So they're going to use the book. They're going to use uh, previous notes. They're not going to go out and create materials. That's a big problem that they're going to have. Lacking relevant institutional... Uh, um, 
uh, lacking on-site support, having inac inadequate software, receiving few rewards for their effort. All of these things, I'm, I believe, are going to be, uh, can be possible issues. With regard to software, however, there's a lot of good free software out there that should allow you to create the materials that you need. So I don't know that that's a huge uh, hindrance. The other ones I can certainly understand. Swain also notes that there are a range of cultural and organizational, psychological and social barriers. That may be that in the country that you're in, uh, it's frowned upon to use these things. And so there's going to be other types of barriers. Largest problem, though, is definitely going to be the time needed to get something built and up and running. Uh, and uh, in their own survey and their own practices, they also agreed that time is going to be the biggest problem to integration. They're going to have other problems with integration because sometimes the syllaba, syllabus and the curriculum that a teacher is working in is rigid and it provides little opportunity to do that type of integration. And you may be in a situation that that's the case. You're going to have more difficulty trying to get this stuff in. You may be in a situation where there is insufficient uh, internet access if you're putting this stuff up online as in a podcast um, and your students won't have access to it or they're not going to have access to cell phones. Uh, so that they can uh, download this stuff onto their cell phones. Uh, generally speaking, though, if uh, syllabi and curriculum are flexible enough where you can incorporate these things, it should be possible to incorporate these things. All right, some of the findings that they had, one was that students were bored. They lacked uh, the perception that they thought this was good and necessary. Boredom, interestingly enough, one of the key problems with an audio-only system from my own experiences, developing podcasts for my students, um, native speakers um, at, the at the college level, uh, one of their problems was that they would get bored. They would get lost in the, in the, in the lecture or the discussion in the podcast. Uh, interestingly enough, um, this research also said that some of the students did not like the podcast because they were perceived to be homemade uh, podcasts, even though you know researchers would say, hey, this is authentic language. The students perceived it as, as homemade. I'd love to see more research on this and whether uh, students in other locales, other uh, cultures, other language, uh, other, sec other first language uh, learners um, would see this as, uh, as something that's homemade and not good or whether we'd see it as authentic language. I find that, I thought that was an interesting uh, concern. Uh, there were other concerns with regard to compatibility. Can I get this to save in the proper format? Can I just put a shout out here to two formats that everybody should be using? Uh, one, the most popular one would be uh, MP3. Um, avoid using any of the other ones that are owned by certain people. I realize that MP3 is patented, but it is currently freely available everywhere. It does stream on the web, and so MP3 is the friendliest puppy that's out there. The other would be OGG -O -G -G format. Uh, because that is a truly open source, patent-free uh, format that also will stream onto the web. I typically put everything, if it's audio, onto MP3, and that way I will avoid any problems. That stuff will stream from almost anywhere and almost uh, any type of software, um, as far as other possibility for concerns. Uh, the end of their study, or the, or the middle of their, their study, they found out that students were very uh, uninterested in using this digital resource, particularly if it was an independent study. Um, so I thought that was uh, interesting, and I'm, my thought would be, for them, sad. They were hoping to provide extra resources for students to make them independent learners. I see where they were going. And uh, the results of the study tend to at least show that they were less interested, which is a, a, a sad thing. So they, again, this is a longitudinal study, so they rehashed everything and tried to do blended uh, podcasts. And they also tried to refocus their podcasts. Um, and I believe this was going to be better for them. Uh, the, this also had different gr level of students. These were postgraduate students. And um, so they, they saw uh, better uh, feedback from there. But one of the things that they did learn was uh, a challenge that they had. The resources that you make, the podcast that you make is how much of it should be generic material and how much of it should be discipline specific. Okay, if you have discipline specific materials, your students are probably going to be interested, but it's probably going to be more difficult for them. If you have uh, material, generic material, it's going to be more language based. In other words, more of learning the tree trunk of language and less so the branches. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's going to be an issue. <coughs> Where do you put them? 
<coughs> so that's going to be an issue. Where do you put them? Do you do, you know, do you do more generic, spe generic, or do you do more specific? That's going to depend on your students and the level of materials that need that, uh, that they're going to need. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting comment. I believe that's going to be a good source of research for anybody interested in uh, that. <clears throat> the podcast that they make, they thought they were a bit too casual, so they made them a little bit more formal. So and they also recorded topics that were likely to be related to the students' experiences. Again, they're going back to the idea of motivating students. Now, bear in mind, the first time they did this, they thought that's what they were doing, uh, creating more, quote-unquote, homemade material. I would have, too. <clears throat> this time through, they're trying to make them more look them make them look more professional, so that students would be uh, possibly more interested. Okay, very good idea. So they changed uh, some things within the curriculum here to try to include in, uh, blended learning. Okay, blended learning is where you're going to be using some face to face, some some uh, online. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, let me jump out here to some of the discussion things that they did uh, in the paper. Uh, some of the biggest concerns that they're going to have now as they're going through this process is professional development. If we want teachers to be able to use and create materials for their students, they're going to need to know how to do it. They're going to need professional development. This little podcast that I'm creating right here, this video podcast, someone, if you're a teacher, you're going to need to know, how do I set this up so that I can make it available to students? So there's going to be uh, professional development that's going to be important. <clears throat> Um, and I would agree. If we want to incorporate this Web 2.0 stuff, they're going to need to have some uh, training in knowing how to do it. Uh, another point here that I've highlighted, the integration of podcasts into a standing curriculum within language school uh, has proved challenging. Um, the students, for one, were not overtly impressed with our efforts. Faced with the realities of poor resource and continued work pressures, we ourselves questioned the worth of taking on a blended approach. Critically begun to wonder if blending works within an educational setting. Um, at present, uh, difficult commercial imperatives seemingly limit what we can do to further integrate these new technologies. Again, this was in 2009. I believe things have changed since then, and things are beginning to, ball, to move in the other direction. I would love to see more research on this. Um, say... As we continue to research, we think that narrowing the scope of our efforts, focusing on listening materials, might have been productive. This is the second part of their work. More investigations are also required to further describe the range of the audio quality suitable for low budget, very low budget, and high budget contexts. Okay, now, uh, I can tell you this right now, that for most people, what I am doing right now is sufficient, and this would be considered low budget. You can certainly add other components, but for most of what you want to do, the technologies that I'm using here, and a couple others, most of which are free or online uh, or open source, you should be able to use. <clears throat> Recommend further research, paying closer attention in experimenting with genre and a variety of social utilities afforded by podcasting. I would absolutely agree uh, with that. Okay, um, Development of a blended assessment practice, too, uh, also going to get our attention. And I would agree with that. Some way to do this. Uh, longitudinal mixed methodology studies may contribute to a better understanding of the implications of taking a blended approach to second language settings. Uh, I want to thank them for this research and uh, the article that they produced. I also want to talk about the, the idea of not only doing audio, but, for example, using presentation, like I'm doing here, where you're looking at all this stuff that's up here on the page. You can actually look at the documents. I believe this is going to be more motivating to students. I also believe that we have uh, a change in venue with regard to things like what uh, Salman Khan is doing over at Khan Academy. Uh, Khan Academy, as you may be aware, is a site <coughs> that uh, will primarily be in the sciences, but it's continuing to grow, uh, and they have over 3,000 videos to walk people through the simplest things in mathematics, all the way through um, algebra and calculus and uh, business and finance elements. They have lots of these little videos. And now they're starting to use these in the classroom in something that's called flipped education, flipping the classroom. It's just another article that I found uh, online related to what Salman Khan and uh, his organization is now doing. <clears throat> the idea here is that you show videos as homework, and then you come into class and you actually do it. 
Okay. Normally, it's the other way around. You uh, do the practice and the explanation in class, and then you, for homework, is that they go home and do it. So they're trying to flip things around. None of this has been done in ESL yet, but I certainly believe that it can be done. <clears throat> in other words, we create video podcasts that are short, that are to the point, that carry a variety of areas, and we can walk a person through uh, the components needed so that they can progress in language. Uh, I do believe it's coming. If you look on YouTube, you'll find lots of different people putting up video uh, clips on doing certain things. No one has actually taken off in the realm of ESL or TESLL. Uh, to train teachers to do this, but I believe it's something that's going to be coming into the future, and so we want to thank um, <clears throat> these uh, authors here for their work. Uh, this is a glimpse of what is to come, in my opinion, and I do recommend read the article and now begin thinking of ways that we can flip uh, education for uh, TESOL and ESL. Thanks for stopping by. I hope that you liked this uh, particular uh, article, and uh, I hope to have a couple more coming up real soon. Talk to you later.